All right, good morning, everybody. A week before Christmas here in Maine. Born this morning, it's 20 degrees out right now. We always run into trouble when it's this cold. Sometimes the trucks freeze up, the water on the trucks freeze up, the hoses freeze up, the lines freeze up. So there's always snow and ice to deal with. But I think we're gonna make it. I think we'll get through it today. So just getting ready. First truck just showed up. 7 a.m. and it's cold. I mean, it's only supposed to get to 32 today. So the mix we got, we got a 4,000 PSI mix. We got hot water. You can see the steam coming out of the drum. We got hot water, probably about 140 degree water in there. Fiber mesh, uh, air entrainment. And then we're throwing a couple bags of Callan for accelerator just to get it going. And then, you know, usually on styrofoam, it's gonna it's gonna dry up. And we can get a power towel finish on it. We got blankets, put it on it afterwards. But that's just the way it is. That's how we get concrete done here in the winter time in Maine. I'm not saying it's fun or anything, but sometimes we just got to keep moving, keep going. Got to get paid, right? So we'll get it mixed up. And we're gonna get going. So this is the second week of December here in Maine. It's it's cold this week. The, this is a, actually a Thursday we're pouring this floor. Now Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the temperatures weren't too bad. They were they were in the 20s at night, but at least they were getting above freezing during the day. Today was the coldest day of the week, and we couldn't we couldn't cancel and delay for the next day, Friday, because we already had another pour for Friday. So you know the temperatures got down to uh, they were in the teens when I left my house. So it was about this is down on the coast of Maine by the ocean. So the temperatures usually stay a little bit warmer overnight by the ocean. So it was about 20 when we showed up. They were calling for a high of, you know, 30 to 32. So we weren't like crazy excited about coming down and pouring this today, but it was the only day we had to do it. The following week, next week, the, the weather doesn't look good at all. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, looking at the, the advanced forecast. So it was like, you know, if we cancel this, we might not get another chance. So we just, you know, toughed it out, decided to do it. The concrete mix we use is, is really helpful. You know, the real key is when those trucks get batched out, that, that water is hot. Because even if they drive, you know, if it's a 20 or 30 minute drive, that, that stuff, that drum, the, the metal, you know, the trucks sit outside at night. So the metal is ice cold, the drums are ice cold. So it's cooling down really fast as the concrete drives to the job. So we're already losing a lot of temperature. We want to maintain as much heat in the concrete as possible before the concrete gets laid out like this. Once we lay it out like this, you know, four to five inches thick, now the concrete's cooling down really fast, especially if overnight the styrofoam wasn't covered. Now, luckily this styrofoam was covered with those blankets. So it didn't really have any, any like frozen dew on it, frozen moisture on it, which some of our jobs do. The guys just think the styrofoam is enough and not covering them with blankets. But Jim, this job is for Jim, the guy in the orange right there. He did the foundation and those are his blankets and all that. So he he takes pretty good care of it and gets it all ready for us. And then we just need to show up and pour like this. So, you know, it made for as cold as it was this morning, it made for pretty good conditions for pouring. Now just touching, touching everything, even even the rakes, the guys, that, the metal rakes, you know, me holding the chute there with my gloves on, the bull float, the chute that's metal, all that stuff, just touching all that stuff makes your hands cold. So it's, it's important that, you know, we keep the keep moving, number one, but also the having the water reducer, and you guys might look at the concrete and go, oh boy, that stuff's really wet, that's not going to be any good. But remember, we got water reducer in it, so... We're not really, really using water to make the concrete flowable. It's a chemical they add at the plant. And the reason we use that water reducer is so we can get this thing poured as quick as possible. Having this stuff at, <coughs> excuse me, having this stuff at about a seven inch slump is gonna help us get this stuff in just as fast as we possibly can. So that just makes, <laughs> kind of makes the torture of pouring in the uh, in the cold weather a little bit easier. <laughs> now I'm real. I'm just kidding. It's not really torture, but I will say, you know, I've lived in Maine my whole life. I'm 58 years old, and 
when I was younger, I loved I loved the cold weather. I loved winters. I loved the snow. You know, we'd have snowmobiles. I'd even I'd snowmobile to school <laughs> from my house, and the cold just didn't bother me. But as I get older, especially you know, especially now, where I'm 58, man, I don't know. The cold goes right through me. I've got I've got multiple. I got insulated pants on. I've got. Uh, uh, not only are my pants insulated, but I've got long johns on under those. So, and then for shirts, I've got, you know, I've got a t-shirt. I've got a insulated shirt on there. I've got a, a sweatshirt and then a hooded sweatshirt on there. So I'm multiple layers um, and I still get cold. I don't know. It's just, I just can't, I can't seem to stay warm in the winters anymore. But somehow, somehow we make it through. I know, like we keep our trucks running. <laughs> not only, not only so when we jump back in them, they're already warm, but also I got a extra pairs of gloves and boots in there. So if I do need to go run to the truck real quick and and grab an extra pair of gloves, at least the gloves are warm when I put them on my hands, and then I can just exchange them. And same with the boots. If my feet do get cold, then I can just switch my boots out. But usually, as far as your feet goes, is is the concrete's pretty warm still, so you. Your toes and stuff stay pretty warm in this stuff. It's just your hands that usually get cold. Now what we're doing here, the reason we're dumping this much out at once is we like to empty one truck and get that truck just right out of the way. We know with the five of us there, we know it's not going to take us very long to screed this. So the key really is for us is let's, let's get this truck empty. We don't want to just pour half of him out and let the other half sit in the drum spinning with that with that really hot water in there so let's get him dumped out you know as long as we got <clears throat> one guy magging the edges and then I'll grab the grade stick here in a minute and I'll shoot my pads it's not going to take us long to screed this with five guys so we'll get it screeded we'll get it bull floated really really fast it's just a matter of let's get him dumped get him empty get him out of the way because we got to get the second truck in and start you know preparing him get him mixing up get the accelerator in him we don't want a big lag time between the two trucks we want them we want to dump them out just as fast as we can right back to back so you know, harvey's holding the chute i was scraping the chute darren and luke are grabbing the screed they're starting to screed our pads we, we are using the a vibratory screed today the gas powered one so we're just screeding our pads to go off from and i'm I'm the one with the grade stick right there. I'll, I'm shooting some pads so we can get our screed pads ready to go. And then it's just a matter of using the vibrating screed. You'll see that in a second. It's really easy to get this down. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit later in the video just how this ended up finishing for the guys. You know, how long it took them before they got the finish on this. I don't know if you'll be, you might be surprised, you might not. But if you guys are wondering, you know, pouring this thing is one thing, but then getting the finish on it and hopefully getting it sawed before you got to recover it is a whole different thing. It's a whole different process. So it's just one other thing to kind of worry about if you're pouring out here in the cold. This Now, luckily, this house floor, this is a house, is getting an engineered wood flooring over it. So it's getting like half inch, you know, I don't know what it is, three eighths of an inch thick to a half inch thick flooring pretty much over the, the whole thing um, even I don't know what the kitchen's getting the kitchen's probably getting tile or something like that but none of, at least none of the concrete's going to be exposed afterwards so which is would be different than like a garage floor you know where all the concrete's exposed but you can see what we do now we got our outside edges where Jim was magging to the top of the wall and now we got our pads our screed pads on the inside to go by and that's how we keep the floor, you know, nice and flat. Is we want we want to make sure we got a pad that's right perfectly to grade on each side of the screed board. And that's kind of what what I'm going to be looking at now. I'm going to extend the pad a little bit closer to the outside wall because the the width of this thing was about you know 30 feet, and the board we have on this vibrating screed is 12 feet. So I just want to make sure that it reaches both ends because that's kind of what I'm doing as I'm running this you know I'm kind of keeping my eye on each end of this thing the right side and the left side to make sure what we call it scoring and then Luke and Harvey are the two guys raking the concrete 
all they need to do is just keep it right to make sure it's just a little bit high behind me as I'm pulling this thing. I just want to keep going. Like I don't want to stop, stop and start in here. I, slow and sure is is the process. Now I'm going to come up on a pipe right here, a little white pipe in the way, so I'll have to, I'll have to stop it, set over that pipe. But that's pretty normal. The less starting and stopping I can do, the the, the less likely you're going to have a hump or a dip in this thing. All in all, though, those things are pretty easy. They're pretty easy to run. Just has a little trigger on it for a throttle. Not too heavy, they're about 35 to 40 pounds. If you've seen some of my other videos where we hand screed, you know, we got two guys on the on the screed. Kind of like the same way we struck those pads in the middle. This is definitely a lot easier when it's cold like this, for sure, screeding. One, I know one thing that would be cool on these is to have heated handle grips. Maybe, uh, Maybe we can get one of these guys to install heated handles on one of these things. Yeah, that first half went down pretty good. You can see how nice that looks after Darren bull floats it. And now this this second part here is going to go pretty smooth. I got that one pipe. I will have to stop and set over, but as you as you watch me pull that screed back, you can see the surface that leaves. That leaves a really nice surface. Especially, you know, having that water reducer in there, being able to use this slump, that just makes things go even faster. If that concrete was a little stiffer, let's say like a five slump, yeah, I mean, this would this would be going a lot slower, and even the bull floating would be a lot harder. Looks kind of cool with the glare of the lights off that. And you can see the second truck backing in. You know, there was only room for one truck in the job site, that and that driveway was pretty long, so. And you can see we're almost done screeding this thing, so that's why we wanted to dump that first truck out as fast as we could and get him out of the way. So now as this second truck stops, you know, we gotta we gotta get him stopped, we gotta get his chutes on, get the accelerator up the ladder, get it dumped in, and then get the load mixed up before we can even start pouring. And basically, you know, hey, we're done screeding now. Got one other little pipe to go around there, then Darren's gonna bull float. You see Darren's not holding the bull float handles with his hands. His hands are cold. Trying to get his hands to warm up. Ooh, yeah, it's cold. My fingers are cold right now. The rest of my body's not too bad. Just keeping busy helps. So that first truck went pretty good. The tricky thing about this time of year is because the concrete's so hot, See the steam coming out of it. Because the concrete's so hot, then you put that accelerator in there, you know, and obviously it spins and spins. Is uh, the concrete starting to set up before you even get it screeded? You know, I didn't feel it on this one today. The other day it was, and it made screeding pretty hard. So and you've got a really short amount of time to get it dumped out, get it raked around, get the edges mag, get it screeded before it starts setting up. So you really, really got to know what you're doing. Luckily, luckily, all these guys have done it for years, so um, it's not too bad. But we struggled. I struggled the other day, screeding, just trying to get it down because it was setting up pretty fast. So right about now we're kind of loving that water reducer in there you can see how that makes it so flowable um, I don't know what that's that's probably seven or eight slump that's pretty normal for the amount of water reducer we're using and it's really the good thing another good thing about it is it's really warm so <laughs> after standing around a couple minutes waiting in between the two trucks you know you're cold you want to get moving you want your feet to be warm you can see everybody's wearing really thick gloves today but the water reducer is really the key that that speeds this up you know probably probably 50 percent we're putting this in probably 50 percent faster than we would if we didn't have water reducer and we were pouring i don't know let's say we were pouring a four slump four to five slump 
this this would be going in a lot slower, a lot of harder work to try to get that stuff pulled around. Using our little extension chute too. I mean, you wouldn't even be able to use a chute like that with a four-inch slump. You'd, I don't know. You either have to pump it or use a conveyor truck or, you know, I don't know if anybody would wheelbarrow something like this. But it, having that little chute with the uh, with that slump is really the key. I mean, again, they probably charge three to four bucks a yard extra for that. So I don't know how many yards this will say. This was 20 yards. So you're talking about 80 bucks. 80 bucks extra to use a water reducer. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of a no-brainer. think about that screed let me know how you think that looks see how he's leaving a line look on the left hand side of the video on the edge of the screed board see how he's leaving that line over there and then he's also leaving one on the right that's kind of what Luke is that's the main thing he's looking for to have a nice even line like that on both sides that means the screed is is uh, screeding it nice and flat and level if that line varies, you know, if it goes from being deeper to even not even seeing the line in areas, then you know you're kind of making waves in there and the floor is not going to be quite as level. But look how smooth that makes it. Look how easy it is for Darren to bull float that. I mean, down and back and you're done. And then maybe what some you guys don't know is that makes it easier to power trial too. So where it's only like, like, where it's only in the low 20s for temperatures, if you're wondering if that stuff's going to freeze, it won't freeze. You know, the combination of the hot water and the concrete, the uh, accelerator in the concrete, and then the chemical reaction between the cement and the water, you know, called hydration, that creates heat in itself. You know, where it's in the 20s today, that, that, it, it won't like turn into a block of ice or nothing. It will set up. The real key is after it sets up, after it's power trial, then you got to protect it with these blankets. Otherwise, it will freeze because the the warmth or the heat being generated in the concrete will dissipate, and then you know it'll stop freezing. So, I mean, if it was if it was around zero, it might freeze, but not with it's well, not when it's in the 20s. So this is a good a good concrete mix for corn and really cold weather. So, back earlier in, in the beginning of the video, I told you how I'd let you know how this thing finished up. Now, so what we got done pouring about 8:30 in the morning, and then you know I took off. I went and got some other stuff ready and looked at some other jobs. Uh, 
Jim Jim hung around with Darren and Lou and Harvey took off and went and did some other stuff. So they didn't end up putting a power trial on this until 11.30. So they let it sit for three hours. That's another good thing about being able to bull float it nice and smooth like this is you can let it sit a little bit longer than if it's rough and you can still get that, that good float finish on it. So they let it firm up really, really hard before they power trialed it. So at 11.30 they hit it and then by 3.30, 4 o'clock it was, it was pretty much done. It wasn't like shined out, burned out like some of our floors are when the temperatures are a lot warmer but it was really nice and smooth. Um, they, they, it wasn't hard enough so they could get the saw cuts in it, so they just covered it with the blankets, and then Jim and Harvey were gonna come back early the next morning and put the saw cuts in it. But it did, you know, it did take a while to cure up, longer than what it would on a, a little bit warmer day, say if it was in the 40s, but they still got a really nice finish on it by four o'clock, and then they could take off. Whew. All right, so I think under the circumstances that went in pretty good. Still cold out though. My fingers are cold just from washing, just from washing up. But hey, we're Mainers. We have to deal with it all every year. It's been the same thing for 40 years. Four seasons of concrete. You know, it goes from freezing temperatures to temperatures in the summer where it's 95, hot and humid. You know, and then spring and fall, it's in between. So. It's gonna be okay. Hey guys, so I'm wearing my new treads boots in the concrete today. I just want to show you these are uh, these are about size 11. I'm putting them right in all right on over my boot here. So they just slide right on over like that. They slide back off. They're pretty tight. They're really form fitting. They're really lightweight. So after you get them on. You don't even really feel they're on. So I've used them a couple times in the concrete and they seem to be working really good. I will like to say these boots, these new boots were using these treads. You see them right there. I am liking these treads boots. We've been, I've been wearing them for a couple days now. I'll show you the specs on them, but I gave some to, I gave some to Harvey and I gave some to Darren and they both really like them. Like I can, I can't even tell they're on right now, and I got my bean boots on underneath. But you can see, see Harvey's got his on right there. Harvey, you liking those treads boots? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, nice. I'll get you some, Jim. Size 13, though, right? 13. Yeah, but is that gonna go over my other shoes? Whatever other shoes you wear, whether they're work boots or like I got my bean boots on. Yeah, so I, I just. They slide right over them, yeah. The same. So if I wear a 13 shoe, do I slide over yeah. my 13 shoe? Yeah. They make them, and so they slide over, yeah. Because yeah. I wear, I wear 10 and a half. I got, I think these are 10 and a half 11s. Is that what they were? 11 and a half. Yeah. 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 They slid right over mine, pretty easy. Yeah. That was size 12 boot. Yeah. So we all went and Darren's got some. Well, Darren took his off already. How'd they come off? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. You slide right off. Right over my bean boots. Yeah. So we're gonna be trying these out for a little bit. Let you guys know how they work. And you know, I'll put a link for them down in the description if you want to check them out. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.